Hello everyone and welcome back! In the last few lessons we have introduced several types of RxJS subjects. We are now going to put subjects to a practical use by implementing a very common design pattern in our application. We are going to be implementing a centralized store. In order to understand what are the benefits of this approach, have a look here at our home component that is displayed here. As you can see, with the current design of the home component, every time that we navigate into it, by using here the navigation menu, we are going to trigger here a new HTTP request. So we will be fetching our course data from the backend again and again. Let's now confirm that that is indeed the case. We are going to switch here to a larger window and we are going to trigger here our home component by navigating, for example, to the about page and then back here to the home component. So as you can see, we have triggered here one API request to slash API slash courses. If we now head over here to the view course page and we click back to the home component, we're going to see that again we did a duplicate HTTP request, which is fetching the data from the server once again. So this data did not change. We are just fetching it back because we had not kept it in memory on the client. So whenever we navigate between two routes and we discarded and recreated our home component, we lost this data that we had here. We would like to avoid that we have to make these HTTP requests constantly to the server and instead we would like to be able to store the data here on the client side independently of the home component. So whenever the home component gets discarded, our data should not get discarded with it. We need a central place in memory on the client to store our data. Whenever our home component needs the data, it simply needs to subscribe to it and it's going to receive the latest version of the data. So we have here an indication of what our design will be. We are going to design a centralized service that is going to contain our data and that service is going to expose a couple of observables. That service is going to be responsible for fetching the data from the backend at the appropriate moment and also it's going to be responsible for storing the data in memory, providing it to the rest of the application under the form of an observable. Let's then see what this shared observable service will look like. We're going to start creating it by going here to the common directory and we're going to create here a file we are going to call it store.service.ts. This is going to contain our centralized observable store. We are going to write this under the form of a class. So we are going to call the class store and we are going to make it an Angular service since this application here is an Angular application. There will be minimal Angular related code in this class we are only going to need here the injectable decorator. Also, we need to configure this service in our application so that we can easily inject it in other services and components, such as, for example, here the home component. So we are going to make this service injectable in the rest of the application by specifying here the provide in property and we are going to assign it the value of root. This configuration here simply means that there is only one store for the whole application. We are going to go ahead and inject it here directly in our home component. We are going to create a constructor for the home component and we are going to have the store injected here. So as you can see, we now can access the store service. The store service is going to contain our data and we will be able to consume the data under the form of an observable. Let's then define that observable. We're going to switch here to the store class and we're going to define the public API of our store. We're going to define here an observable called courses, which is going to be of type observable of course array. So this is where we are going to store this list of courses that we see here on the screen, both the beginner courses and the advanced courses. They will all be available here to the reminder of the application by subscribing to this courses observable. The question now is how are we going to define this observable? 
This is one of those situations where it's really not convenient to use observable.create or one of the existing methods in the RxJS library. So this is a good situation for using a subject to create this observable. Let's then define here a private member variable, which is going to be our subject. We are going to make this private to this class so that only this class has the ability for emitting values for this observable. We want to keep that power constrained here inside this class. We wouldn't want parts of the application, such as for example the home component, to be able to emit a list of courses on behalf of the store itself. Only the store has the power of emitting new values for this observable. The subject is just a private implementation detail that we are using to essentially create this courses observable. So let's start by defining here a plain RxJS subject and we are going to build this observable here by deriving it from the subject just like we did before using the asObservable method. With this subject we are going to be able to emit values here for the courses observable which can then be consumed in other parts of the application such as for example the home component. Let's now discuss what type of subject do we want to use for this store implementation. It's important for our application that late subscribers to this observable to also get the latest emitted value. So whenever we navigate throughout the application, going to the about screen for example and back to the courses screen, we will have each time new instances of the home component created, each time the component gets destroyed and recreated as we navigate back to the courses route. So we want that the later instances of this component to also get the courses data. This means that the subject that we are looking for is the behavior subject. This is the subject implementation that is going to ensure that the late subscribers always get the latest version of the course array. So we are going to provide here an initial value for that array, which is going to be the empty array. So initially there are no courses loaded in the store. Notice also that we have specified here the parametric type course array in our behavior subject. This is going to help us to write our code in a type safe way. This essentially means that we can only pass to this subject via the next method instances of course arrays. So if we try to pass in, for example, an array of numbers, we would get a compilation error. Now that we have designed our store service, let's then start implementing it. We are going to load some data from the backend and we are going to emit it in this observable. This is coming right up in the next lesson.